Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives. Uh, still working on uh, industrial electronics entry. Uh, in this case, we are going to be focusing on a separate part on DC theory. Uh, that is uh, uh, working on Kirchhoff's law. We are given from the question paper of November 2019. This is a circuit which had uh, uh, to study fig one below and calculate the currents I1, I2, and I3 and power. R4, the power through resistor R4, uh, across R4 by using Kirchhoff's laws. So we are going to apply uh, the Kirchhoff's laws in this case. All right. So take note, guys, that um, in this case, we are not given even any part to use as a loop, like uh, a hint, like sometimes you might be given a hint to say, uh, you're going to use this loop or, and so forth. But here we are not given any hint in this case. All right. So depending with the way that you're going to take your your your, your solutions. Uh, in this case, I'm going to start with the loop uh, D. I'm going to take this one from D in this direction. All right. Or oh, let me just reduce a little bit and use another one. Uh, let me just use this one. So I'm going to take from D to E to F to C and back to D, I'm going to work this loop. Uh, already, we are given the voltage. This is your positive, this is your negative. So that's why I'm taking from the positive in this direction of what? Of current. But if we are to take note in this branch of I3, this branch here that is called I3, we are having three unknown values. So it's going to be difficult for us to work with three unknown values. So in order for us to remain with the two unknown values, I1 and I2, we can write I3 in terms of I1 and I2. Remember from your Kirchhoff's law that the current flowing into a junction that is toward the junction is equal to the one flowing away, which means I1 is equal to the sum of I2 and I3 flowing away. These two, they are, they are away from the junction. So it is equal to I2 plus I3. We want to make I3 the subject so you can uh, transpose I2 to the other side, meaning to say we're going to subtract. That's I1 minus I2 is equal to I3. So in place of I3, I can indicate this as I1 minus I2. So this is going to be indicated as I1 minus I2 in this case. So that we have two unknown values is going to be easier for us. Okay, so referring to the loop that I indicated, which is a uh, uh, D, so I'm just going to have this as my loop one. So this is my first loop, which is a D from D to E to F to C and back to the point B. All right, so this is what I'm having. So from this loop, if we are to check here, uh, remember that the voltage from our Kirchhoff's law in a closed loop is equal to the algebraic sum of the current to the resistance in each branch. So if we are to check here, this branch here that has got I1, there is resistor R1. So we've got resistor and current. That means we've got a voltage drop. It is maintaining the direction of the arrow that we had. So which means we are going to multiply I1 to R1. We move on in this branch of F to C. Between F and C, there is current I1 minus I2 with resistor R4. So this is going to be plus current I1 minus I2. Remember, it's current times resistance, which is times resistor R4. So with this information, we can substitute our values because we have the total voltage from this point, which is 12, is equal to I1 times R1, that is, uh, we've got R1, which is 2 times I1. So it's, this is going to be 2 I1 plus R4. R4 is 7 ohms. So this is going to be 7 into I1 uh, minus I2. So this is going to be I1 minus I2 like this. All right, so we have formulated an equation that we can expand, collect like terms so that uh, we can have a finalized equation. So expanding... Uh, the brackets by seven, it's a plus. So it's seven times I1. That's seven I1. Seven times minus I2, which is a minus seven I2. So we can collect like terms. That is, we've got I1 and I1 in this case. So two plus seven, which is going to give us uh, a nine in this case. So this is going to be nine I1 
minus 7i2. So you're going to leave this or you can just rewrite as 9i1 minus 7i2 is equal to 12 as the, uh, your finalized equation. Or you can even just leave it at that stage. So this is your first equation that you're going to, to use in your calculations from the loop uh, uh, of uh, D, E, F, uh, C to D again. So now I'm going to take this as my second loop in this case, uh, which is from this point, I'm going to take it from this A. I'm going to use from A to B to C to F. I'm going to use this part on top here with the direction of current. I'm going to take it this way in this part like this. All right, so taking it this loop, uh, let me write it down so that we can properly see this one, all right? So let me uh, write it here. So like I said, uh, on the second condition, I'm going to use loop uh, A to B. So I'm going to use A to B to C uh, to F and back to A, of which we can use the outer side from, from E to F, to, from E to A to B to D back to E. Yeah, that one I will, I will explain another part so that you see how you can attempt that other part. We are going to have the same answers also. So using this one, it's a closed loop, but we do not have a voltage source, which means our V that's a zero because we do not have a voltage source. So our V still is equal to the algebraic sum current times the resistance. So in this branch from A to the point C, from starting from F, actually F, A, B to C, this whole branch, there is I2, so there is I2 with resistor R2 and R3. So we are going to add R2 uh, plus R3 like this. Then we move from C to F. If you are to check here, this is the direction that we have taken, but if we are to check from C to F, we are opposing because our arrow is supposed to be this way, but the current is moving this direction. We are opposing the direction of the current flow, this one. So whenever you oppose, it is going to be a negative. So this is going to be minus I3 times the resistor that is affecting I3, which is R, R4. So you have to be very, very careful on this part. All right. So like I said, it's a closed loop without a voltage source. So the voltage is going to be at zero, which is equal to R2 and R3. We have these two resistors. So you're going to add two, uh, R2 and R3, which is uh, four plus six times current I2, which is minus I3. We have uh, I3, which is represented with I2, I1 minus I2. So we are going to have this as minus R4, which is seven. So this is going to be minus seven into the sum, uh, this one, the difference of I1 and I2, which is I1 minus I2. We are replacing our I3 with I1 minus I2 so that we can expand our brackets. So zero is equal to four plus six, which is 10 I2 minus uh, seven times I1, that's seven I1 minus and minus, that's a positive seven I2. Collecting like terms, we have I2 and I2, but this I1 does not have any terms, so it is going to remain as minus seven I1. Then we can add 10 plus this seven, which is a 17. So this is going to be 17 I2. So you have formulated an equation in this case for uh, loop two, uh, which is the loop A, B, C, F, uh, A. With these two, we can now be able to calculate the currents because we have got two equations that we have formulated in this case. So we have this part here, the first part uh, or our first equation, which is from nine I1 minus seven I2 is equal to 12. We do the same thing here, we've got minus seven I1 uh, plus uh, 17 I2, which is equal to zero like this. So with these two equations, we are going to solve them simultaneously so that we can solve uh, for I1 and I2 at the same time. That is uh, simultaneously in this case, all right. So depending with the method that you're going to use or which part are you going to eliminate depending with what you want? So in this case, if I am to find current one, I have to eliminate uh, I2, all 
All right, so it depends with which part you want to eliminate. So in this case, I'm going to eliminate uh, I2 in order for me to calculate to calculate I1, I have to eliminate I2. So to eliminate I2, I check on these coefficients of the currents. I interchange these numbers, 17 and seven. I multiply on top by 17, below I'm going to multiply by a seven like this. So this is going to multiply everything. The 17 affects everything. If these numbers can be reduced, you can reduce them. But in this case, we can't reduce uh, 17 and seven. So the 17, like I said, is going to multiply everything on top. So that's 17 times a nine, which is going to give us 153 I1. 17 times a minus seven, which is going to give us minus 119 I2, which is equal to 17 times a 12. This is 204. We are done. We move on to seven. It does, the, it, we multiply everything again. That's seven times minus seven, which is minus 49 I1. Seven times 17, which is a plus 119 I2, which is equal to seven times a zero, that's a zero. So I want you to be careful. If this side, because you are considering I2, you want to eliminate I2. These two are the same. This is 119, 119, but this is a negative, this is a positive. When these signs are different, you add. So whenever you are given different signs, uh, whether you had a plus on top, a minus below, you add if the signs are are different. If the signs are the same, you have a plus and a plus, a minus and a minus on that condition, you, you subtract. That is what you're going to do. So in this case, these two signs, they are different. So we are going to add to eliminate. So we are going to add the two equations. In this case, that is our equation one to equation two. We add the terms. So if we are to add, this is going to be 153 plus minus 49. So take note, it's plus minus, a plus and a minus, that's a minus, or you can simplify direct from your calculator, 153 plus minus 49, like this direct, you are going to obtain 104. So this is 104 I1. Then if you add minus 119 plus 119, a plus and a plus is a plus. So if we add these two, we are going to obtain a zero. So this is equal to 204 plus a zero. So 204 plus a zero, that's 204. So these two can be divided, we can divide by 104 both sides, by 104 both sides, so that we can eliminate, I, uh, so that we can uh, 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 remain with I1 in this case. So if we are to divide 204, divide by 104, you're going to obtain 1.96153 uh, three and so forth. So this is going to be a two because that's one, five, three. So this is going to be a two in amps. So you've got I1 from eliminating uh, of I2, we managed to calculate I1 by eliminating I2. So that means we can determine or we can find I2 by substituting into any one of the given equations that we have in this case, we can substitute in any one of these. I'm going to take equation one. From equation one, we are given nine I1 minus seven I2, which is equal to 12. So with this information that we have, or from the values that we have, uh, that we have calculated, we can substitute the values or uh, the value that we have for this current uh, I1 in this case, which is given as uh, nine times I1, which is one comma nine six two like this minus seven I2 is equal to 12. So if you are to combine these two, you are going to obtain a uh, 17, uh, 17 comma six five eight minus, uh, all right, minus seven I2 is equal to 12. All right, since we want to calculate I2, we can transpose, uh, this can be 17,652. If we transpose, uh, that's eight, sorry. If we transpose the 12 to this side, it's going to be minus 12, which is equal to seven I2. It's a negative, so it's going to be a positive. This one is a positive, so on this side, it's going to carry a negative. So if we subtract, we find a value, uh, which is going to be 5,6, 
uh, 5.8 is equal to 7i2. So you can find i2 by dividing by 7 each and every term. So that's it. Or you can just make i2 the subject. You substitute your values. It's still only the same thing. So you're going to obtain uh, 0, 0.8082, uh, which is uh, 0, 0.8 to 3 decimal places. It's going to be 808, uh, 0, 0.808. So this is current i2 and current i1. So with these currents, we can determine the value of current I3. Remember that here we are asked to calculate all the currents. That is current one, current two, and current three. And we said current three from this diagram is equal to I1 minus I2. This is what is representing current three. So we can determine current three from that equation since we have the value of current uh, one and current two here. So we can have our current three. So our current three, we said that's current one minus current two. So that means our current three is going to be current one, one comma nine six two minus current two, which is 0, 0,808. So this is going to give us I3. So I3 uh, from these values, if we subtract properly, this is going to be one comma one five four in amps. So that's the value for current I3. All right, so that is what we had. Uh, the other part also we were given also was to calculate the power across the resistor R4, the power across resistor R4. This is uh, the one that we have. R4, this resistor is the one that is affected by current three. So we've got current and resistance in this case of seven ohms. So we calculated I3 here. We calculated I3 from I1 and I2. If you still remember, okay, let me try to reduce this part so that you can see properly. So we calculated I3 on this part. So we have the resistance and we've got uh, the current which is flowing through the, the, the resistor uh, for R4, which is equal to seven ohms and the current that is flowing across that resistor. So we can calculate power because uh, remember that power from current and resistance is equal to current squared times resistance, which is the current flowing in resistor four, which is R3 times R4. So this can give us the power that is uh, for the resistor R4 in this case. So in this case, uh, sorry, if we are to substitute the values that we calculated before, PR4 is going to be current three, which is 1,154 squared times the resistor R4, which is uh, seven ohms in this case. So this is going to give us power, which we know that power is measured in watts. So PR4 is going to be equal to uh, 9,32201. So it's going to be 322 to three decimal places in, in watts. All right, so that was the equivalent power or the power that is uh, obtained from this information. So everything that was asked, we managed to calculate everything. Uh, so in this type of equation, we are not even given the loop to use. You are formulating your own loops from the given diagram. So sometimes they might give you uh, a hint where you are given a certain loop to follow or a certain loop to use. But in this case, we're not given that. So you formulate your own loop uh, or the own path that you're going to take in your calculations. That's it, guys, uh, for industrial electronics entry on DC theory, applying the Kirchhoff's laws uh, on our revisions from Amazon African Motives uh, till we meet again.